Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Now, most of you guys never like these videos where I'm at my desk uh, talking to you in this camera, uh, but today we have kind of a crazy thing going around in the Pokemon world that's starting to creep over into some other TCGs, and that is that a guy named Aaron Wayne, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, has figured out how to utilize a machine to scan Pokemon cards cards within the pack we're talking vintage pokemon packs uh to know if there's a hollow and then even what hollow that card is and that is causing all sorts of controversy and conversation in the pokemon world that is drifting over into magic the gathering and i think uh should be a conversation for sorcery as well and really any tcg that has kind of packs now uh let's kind of give into it you can go watch this video on aaron wayne's strange brain uh if you want to see all the details i'm not a pro on this uh essentially he got his hands on uh, a CT machine, I believe it is. Yeah, a, a CM37 Welge. I don't know. Uh, lots of details. Uh, regardless, the point of this uh, is that he is able to then put that in uh, and scan through to see the hollow, and you can barely make it out here. Like, that's obviously uh, a nine tails, right? Uh, you can barely make it. This is lots and lots of effort and lots and lots of time that he put into this uh, to be able to finally get it to pick up where the hollow pattern is missing, giving a silhouette uh, to be able to see uh, which Pokemon card was in there, uh, which obviously you could then take and uh, and use to get the pack out and whatever card you wanted. Um, so I wanted to give you the 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 kind of what is happening, and then I want to talk about now what this means. Um, on this channel, I have said many many times, you already cannot trust loose packs on the open market. If there is a way um, for uh, bad stores or bad uh, sellers online to take advantage of technology whether that be weighing packs or or whatever uh, that these stores can do to make money they will do that um, and so when you buy a loose pack online you are kind of su being susceptible to that loose pack having been searched or having already been weighed or the hit already been pulled from the box. Now, when you go to a local game store, typically you trust the local store. Like for us, when we had one piece product out, right? We sold packs and people would ask us, has the hit already been pulled from the box? And it's like that question made us basically not want to have loose packs at all. Because if the answer was yes, the loose, the, the hit had already been pulled from the box, then nobody wanted any of the packs in the box. So we have now gone, because we're not going to lie to our customers. I'm not going to lie to you and say, no, it hasn't been pulled when I know it's been pulled. So we've just stopped selling loose packs of games that have these kind of massive hits that makes the box kind of obsolete and whatever. Now, um, what this means is that buying loose packs online is always a scam. You should really never do that. Now, that's not to say that some stores might, you know, have valid loose packs online. And even Pokemon with vintage packs, you have heavy packs and light packs. That's like a known thing. When we sell vintage packs in the store, we mark them if they are heavy or if they are light for Pokemon. Because it's a commonality in the marketplace. Uh, people want to buy a heavy pack in order to get the hollow. Weighing packs of Pokemon from vintage is a very common practice now this is different though because if you now have access to a machine like this or you have a friend who has access to a machine like this or a store owner has a friend of a friend who can go down the line to get access to a machine like this where you can actually take that heavy pack and see if it's a charizard Whew, this is where things get really interesting because you you need to know that anybody who can take advantage of this is going to take advantage of this long term. Um, so, you know, there's people talking about what that means for Pokemon. Um, but I want to talk about with Magic the Gathering is what this means. because I think that this is a huge deal for serialized Magic the Gathering cards starting in like a year and a half to two years. If this technology already exists now on the Internet... In a year and a half to two years, this technology will be not readily accessible, but the large stores in our industry, and let me let me tell you this, the large stores in our industry will take advantage of this. They will. The people who have access to money and capital to take advantage of this are always going to take advantage. I, maybe I'm a pessimist. Maybe I'm, I'm just like negative. Uh, but I believe that people who have the ability to take advantage of this 
will take advantage of it. And so if you have a serialized card that has this little, little tiny little thing on it that can be picked up by a machine like this and show you if you have a serialized card or if you don't have a serialized card, I think that is the loss for Magic the Gathering. Now, um, Magic Vintage Packs, I don't think this matters for. You can't, you can't use this to identify a mox inside of an unlimited pack. You can't use this to pull out the Black Lotus. Um, you could use this, uh, there's some beta packs, I believe, or some beta starter decks that have alpha cards. I think you could probably use this to x-ray those to, you know, to get the alpha cards out of there. Uh, but because this utilizes the hollow patterns and the difference in the way that the, the x-ray or whatever it is sees the hollow patterns, that's how this works. And so there are no hollows in, you know, vintage magic. So I don't think this is going to be a vintage magic thing. I think this is going to be a serialized card thing. In other words, if you are a large store that can sell tons of loose packs online and that kind of thing, you buy your cases, multiple cases of ser of, um, of collector boxes, you crack them out, you put them through the serialized identifier machine, you pull the packs that have the serialized cards, and then on your open market, your packs that you're selling have no shot of having a serialized card. This is the risk, I think, for Magic the Gathering. Now, Sorcery Contested Realm, another game that I talk a lot about on the channel. Um, I think the market for that is going to be a lot less of people who have the ability to take advantage of a machine that would cost this amount of money or the resources or the access. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I think that that uh, magic is a much bigger thing, uh, which would open this up to be uh, more susceptible. But sorcery with their foils in every, you know, nine packs or whatever it is, I do think that because of the way that the foil hit is, you might be able to utilize something like this in order to hit sorcery foils. This could have an effect, again, on loose packs of alpha or of beta down the line it, when this becomes a much more easy thing to get access to for individuals. That being said, all this across the board, buying sealed boxes has always been the direction that you need to go online. I, I know that there's like a, there's a money side to that where you have to have 12 times the money or whatever it is times the money in order to get a box. Um, but I think it's been a pretty commonly known thing that buying loose packs on the internet has always been risky, it has always been something that nobody would suggest to you to go out and do. You should buy loose packs from people you trust, whether that be, uh, you know, online breakers who are opening the box. This is why when I do a break, I always open up the box or the case live on the channel for everybody to see that this is not some sort of loose repacked box. I, I would have no ability to do that. You should always be buying either loose packs from people you trust who you've seen open on camera. Don't just trust me because I'm a trustworthy person. Trust me because you also saw me and I, I was trustworthy enough to open it on camera. If you're, if you're buying things from people that are being able to be open off camera, that is a no, no in this industry. Um, and the same thing goes for buying loose packs. If you want loose packs, I have loose packs of different games up on my shelf for display. I have no intention of opening the jungle packs on my shelf uh, for display. Um, they are loose packs for display. I bought them as light packs. I know they contain absolutely nothing. I want them for the collectability of the loose packs. If you want to do that, then buy a pack online, right? Like buy a pack online, stick it on the shelf to look at and to enjoy. But if you're opening up loose packs from buying it from the internet, this is only going to get more dangerous as technology will only get better moving down the line. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Does this make you scared? Are you a vintage Pokemon fan uh, that this just has? Uh, this is the biggest loss, I think, is for vintage Pokemon uh, to be able to know basically what you got in um, in the pack. Ugh. That's going to be rough for those those heavy packs of vintage Pokemon. You're going to see a bunch of people buying those up right now. Um, and heavy packs for vintage Pokemon uh, will then come back to the market that basically can't have a hit. and can't have a Charizard hit. There'll be Ninetales instead of Charizard and that kind of thing. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.